Warmest greetings for our course leader for the subject IDF402, Ms. Laura. My name is Irina Shahira and joining me today is Lau Isian. We're going to be doing a guest presentation on the personality analysis of two movies consisting of Maleficent alongside Batman. This is our table of content. Hi everyone, my name is Lau Isian and now I'll be talking about a movie character which is Maleficent. Because Maleficent's parents were killed by humans, so she lived as an orphan in the moors, an enchanted forest filled with many magical creatures like fairies and the cute monsters that you can see on the slides. And also she is well respected by other more magical creatures and has a flexible temperament. She has the ability to heal and restore ecological balance. She has the magic that turns the dead trees into living creatures and or even turns a human into a crow. The factor that influencing Maleficent's personality is her environment. Her personality may have been influenced by the cultural norms of the fairy society in which she grew up. For example, fairies in the moors are shown to value harmony, peaceful coexistence with nature and respect for all living beings. These values are reflected in Maleficent's personality as she is shown to be a protector of the moors and deeply connected to the natural world. Second is Maleficent's negative experiences with human society have also had a significant impact on her personality. Her parents were killed by humans and the way that humans treat magical creatures in the environment has contributed to her mistrust and anger towards humans. Her interaction with humans such as betrayal by Stefan have also shaped her personality by causing her to become bitter and resentful. Stefan's actions led to Maleficent's loss of wings, which was a traumatic event that deeply hurt her emotionally. This betrayal caused her to lose faith in humans and made her resentful towards them. Lastly, Maleficent has spent most of her life in isolation and this has contributed to her personality also. Her loneliness has made her more guided and less trusting of others and has also contributed to her protective nature towards the inhabitants in the moors. The theories that describing Maleficent's personality is the Big Five personality trait, which consists of openness, conscientiousness, agreeableness, extraversion, and also neuroticism. Maleficent displays a high level of openness throughout the movie. A simple example of Maleficent's high openness to experience is her ability to transform the environment around her using her magical powers. For instance, in Maleficent, she turns a dead tree into a living creature and creates a magical wall of thorns to protect her kingdom. This demonstrates her creativity and willingness to think outside the box to solve problems which are characteristics of individuals with high openness to experience. Next, Maleficent is initially conscientious as she takes her role as a protector of the moors. However, her conscientiousness decreases as her desire for revenge against Stephen, who betrayed her, grows stronger. She becomes less careful and less diligent in her duties and she does not consider the long-term consequences of her actions. For example, when she curses Aurora, she does not consider the impact it will have on her, on the innocent child. Also, Maleficent displays a mix of extraversion and introversion. She prefers to be alone in her kingdom, but she will interact with others when necessary, especially to exert her power or make a point. Her extraverted attitude seems to be more focused on reaching goals or expressing herself in a way that draws attention than on social interaction. Maleficent is law and agree openness. She is not concerned with the feelings or need of others. She is willing to harm others to achieve her goal. Also, she is not cooperative and prefer to work alone. She is argumentative and she does not hesitate to use her powers to intimate, intimidate others. Lastly, Maleficent exhibits a high level of neuroticism, especially after Stephen betrays her. She starts to feel anxious, paranoid, and her emotions are intense and hard to predict. For example, when she sees an aurora in the forest after the curse, she becomes angry and lashes out at the child.
even though Aurora is innocent. In summary, Maleficent is high in openness and neuroticism, however low in conscientiousness and agreeableness, and it is a mix of extraversion and also introversion. The second theory that describing Maleficent's personality is the Freud's theory. I'll be talking about the Maleficent personality changes throughout the movie from good character to a bad character by using Freud's theory. So, Maleficent can be said to be initially good person or has a balanced personality because her ego can overcome her id with consideration from her superego. At the beginning of the movie, she tried to stop Stefan from stealing a jewel from the Moors kingdom and she seemed interested in him. And now, Stefan becomes Maleficent's id. Maleficent's attraction to the opposite sex is caused by the needs of her id, which is known as instinct. Her attraction to Stefan comes from a basic need in her id, which is driven by her arrows. According to Freud, Eros is a basic human motive that encourages one to behave positively, such as the drive of love. In this case, Maleficent's superego thinks that Stephen is a good person. Maleficent feels pleasure because her id has been satisfied. Maleficent feels happy being alone with Stephen, and because of her id's demand being met, causes her to put full trust in Stephen by openly telling all her stories to him. However, however, Maleficent turned into evil when she found out that Stefan betrayed her. She learned that Stefan betrayed her love and trust by cutting off her wings. This incident causes Maleficent to experience anxiety, namely realistic anxiety. According to Freud, realistic anxiety occurs when there is a real threat or danger that might harm a person. Maleficent's anxiety can be seen from how she cried while holding her bag when she woke up to find her wings that had disappeared. Her sadness and anxiety turned into hatred after she knew that Stefan's purpose of betraying her was to be next kid. Having been betrayed, her it turns into hatred and demands revenge. Just as love is driven by instinct, Maleficent's hatred is also driven by her instinct, which is tenetus. Tenetus is the basic human motive that drives one to behave in a negative way, such as the drive of death. So, Maleficent came to the celebration of the birth of King Stephen's daughter and cursed her, cursed the princess. Maleficent's revenge runs smoothly since her it controls her, overpower her ego without super ego consideration. Her it dominates her ego due to her ego's inability to control it and her unhelpful super ego. As a result, Maleficent can be said to be evil or to have an unbalanced personality since her ego is overpowered by her id in acting without consideration of her superpower. So, in, in overcoming her realistic anxiety, Maleficent applied displacement as a defense mechanism. Displacement is a defense mechanism in which a person redirects her feelings and impulses to onto a less threatening target. Maleficent may use displacement when she directs her anger and aggression towards humans in general, rather than towards the specific individual who have hurt her, such as Stephen. By displacing her feeling onto a larger group, Maleficent is able to avoid the risk of retaliation and protect herself from further harm. The second character that we chose is Bruce Wayne, also known as Batman from the movie Batman Begins. Tapping into Batman's background, Bruce Wayne comes from one of the wealthiest families in the city of Gotham, with his father Thomas being a CEO of Wayne Enterprises and a doctor, and his mother Martha being a heiress to one of the wealthiest families in Gotham City. In Batman Begins, a young Bruce Wayne and his parents are walking home from an opera when a mugger tries to steal his mother's necklace that's being stopped by his father. To their surprise, the mugger shots both of the parents, leaving Bruce the only one alive at the scene. And after the incident, Bruce wants to take matters into his own hands by fighting criminals just like the one that killed his parents. From then onwards, Bruce travels the world to know and dive inside deeper into the criminal's mind. Now tapping in into factors influencing Batman's personality, the first one is life experiences. According to Heart 2020, after the death of Bruce's parents, he actually vowed to seek vengeance on Gotham's dark side making him have an immense amount of hatred towards criminals. The next factor is parental influence. 
as Bruce's parents remain humble, trying their best to combat poverty, even making a railway for the citizens to commute, as well as helping those in Gotham City, making Bruce similar to his parents as he tries to save citizens in Gotham. The last factor being fear. As Bruce has characterophobia, a fear of bats, Batman actually o- overcomes his fear after training with Ra al Ghul, turning fear into his greatest power, making him completely fearless. The first theory describing Batman's personality is Jung's neo-psychoanalytic theory. A narrow psychic energy that fuels the work of personality is called the psyche. When one has a high amount of psychic energy in a particular idea or feeling, It has a high psychic value and significantly impacts one's life. For example, Batman was highly motivated to bring justice towards Gotham City, thus dedicated most of his psychic energy into diving into the mind of criminals. The three components of the human psyche include the ego, personal unconscious, lastly, collective unconscious. First one, personal unconscious, is a repressed or forgotten memory as it is trivial. Tapping into Bruce's personal consciousness, a repressed memory that he often neglected was his fear of bats. That will actually eventually help him to channel out his greatest fear into strength. After having his fear of bats being suppressed for so long, he eventually learned to overcome it after training with Ra al Ghul. Where Ra al Ghul taught Bruce to face fear in order to overcome it. Within personal unconscious, there is a complex, which is a core pattern of emotions, memories, perceptions, and desires organized in the personal unconscious around a common theme, such as power or status. As for Bruce, he has a complex to have the power in order to defeat criminals, thus working very hard to do so by himself. The second component in the human psyche, the ego, is the center of consciousness and is often concerned with perceiving, thinking, feeling, and remembering. Batman has the largest ego, despite being abrasive at times as he is always aware of certain problems that he is unable to solve. Now, looking at the last component of the human psyche, the collective unconscious, is actually an inherited experience of human and pre-human species. Within this, It is the empathy that Bruce shows others, such as criminals, or even a homeless person in Batman Begins, which he gave his own jacket towards, as well as Bruce's kindness. Contained in the collective unconscious, there is actually an archetype, which is images of universal experiences. The first archetype is the persona. As Bruce grew older, Bruce actually formed a persona to seek justice for criminals, which inspired him to create Batman since he feared bats. Bruce's persona actually differs from Bruce's character as what he perceives himself to be. As Bruce is a billionaire who works at Wade Enterprises, buys hotels, and is also known as a playboy for hanging out with multiple girls, driving around in his fancy cars. Meanwhile, as Batman, He is basically saving the lives of people that are bound to get harmed by criminals without even being a police. Now, the second archetype is the shadow. Bruce actually confronted with his darkest side and chooses to team up with it, creating Batman, his shadow self that actually fights crime and devotes his life to bringing justice towards his beloved city of Gotham. According to MH 2022, in order for Bruce to combat evil, his bright sides and dark sides eventually team up against each other. Next up, looking into Jung's typology of 16 personalities, Bruce Wayne is described to be an INTJ personality type. With a driven and focused nature, Bruce is dedicated to achieving his goals. Deliberate and measured, Bruce actually carefully thinks through his plans before taking action towards it. Moreover, Bruce avoids accepting the status quo and long-held traditions, preferring to make his own judgments about what he feels like makes logical sense. Lastly, Bruce is full of new ideas and he always considers if they will work in practice. The last one is individuation. 
In order to reach self-fulfillment, Bruce has finally learned to accept his dark side. To combat evil, his bright and dark sides team up. Being that Bruce tries to protect the people in Gotham City, honoring his parents' memory, and his dark side is that he operates outside of the law, at the same time, does not outright break it. The second theory that can be used to describe Batman is Elport's trait theory. Talking about the nature of personality, according to Elport, we reflect both our ancestors and our surroundings. Within this, heredity and environment plays an important role in our personality as heredity provides raw materials for intelligence, physique, and temperament, which can then be developed. As for environment, the conditions of environment actually shape, expands, or limits us. An example of this is Bruce's environment, as his parents have always remained humble, and they taught their son well, especially treating their butler with impeccable kindness, leading Bruce to adapt to his parents' personality as well. Next up is personal dispositions. Also known as individual traits, personal dispositions are individual characteristics that are opposing to characteristics shared by a group of people. Within this, there are three types of traits consisting of cardinal traits, central traits, alongside secondary traits. Cardinal traits are the most pervasive, influential, and powerful human trait. An example of this would be Bruce's intelligence. Bruce's intelligence always keeps him one step ahead of the criminals whenever they believe they've come up with a master plan in order to finally take him down. The second one is central trait, and Bruce can actually be described as independent, as he often battles against the villains by himself and being prepared for anything that he does. He knows exactly how to beat everyone that is a trait to him or gotten his beloved city. Besides that, Bruce is also open to experiences, continuously going on adventures and on a journey to become Batman. Another example would be Bruce's determination. With the death of his parents, Bruce Wayne swore to see vengeance against criminals in the city of Gotham, showing his determination. Last but not least is secondary traits. Despite Bruce being able to use fear to shift a situation in his favor, and also using intimidation to his advantage, a large amount of empathy that he has gets forgotten sometimes, as this can be seen in the way that he treats villains. Despite constantly battling against villains, he is never intended to kill them. The last part is the two levels of functional autonomy of motives. It is known as the idea that motivates a normal, mature adult which is independent of their childhood experiences as they originally appeared. The first one is preservative functional autonomy, also known as the level of functional autonomy, which relates to low-level and daily routine behaviors. One example of this is Bruce fighting against villains by night, getting three hours of sleep, and waking up the next day to continue his life as Bruce Wayne at Wayne Enterprises, working as a CEO there. The second level is appropriate functional autonomy, and this level relates to self-value, self-image, as well as lifestyle. In this level, Bruce is constantly motivated to be wherever the enemy is at, playing detective. Moreover, Bruce's motivation was actually born with grief and anger, but as time passes by, over the years, he wants to end crime. Not just by fighting crime, but to actually end crime. Despite one may see this as impossible, it simply does not stop him from continuing to pursue it. This is our references. Hi! Hello! 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 Hello!